All right, good afternoon one and all and welcome to the video. In this video, I will be teaching you uh, asynchronous architecture, how to use uh, Python, of course, with Flask and Celery. So we'll understand the overall architecture, how to use, uh, uh, you know, Celery, how everything works, how the queues work. So um, without wasting much of time, let's get started. Um, so let me open my paint so I can explain you with uh, a nice example. Um, I'm going to bring this here. So, um, so first of all, what we will do is basically, let's say we have a client, I'm um, sorry for my bad um, uh, painting here. So we have a client, right? What we want to do when we hit a web server here, right? Initially we hit a web server, we make some background process. Let's say we are posting the data to the database. So we put the data to the database. Once the data is put, we return it back. We return it back to the client. So if you see the, we could break this architecture into an asynchronous architecture. Um, what I mean by that is, um, let me um, scroll down a little bit and explain you that. Uh, I can, I wanted to reduce my size of my brush. Maybe that, that should be fine. So initially, instead of doing that, what I'm saying is what we can do. Uh, we have the client here, right? So a uh, client will post some data, right? Some, some data here. Uh, so that one, okay. So what we'll do is basically we'll have a REST API. It's going to hit the web proxy gateway. The web proxy gateway, what we do is after that, we put the message into the queue, messaging queue. And here, the background processes will take the messages from the queue at a leisurely pace. And once the message is processed, they can put back into like Redis or RabbitMQ to, um, you know, some, or, or some kind of a database or like a SQL Alchemy, SQLite, MySQL, whatever you want. And then you can fetch the data. Let's try to understand uh, this uh, complete stuff, how it works um, uh, with a very nice example. So I'm going to be using Redis for this example. I have Redis up and running. Uh, simple, what I did is basically I uh, had a Docker Compose file. I just said uh, Docker Compose up, tag, tag, build. Uh, let me list uh, comments. Uh, let me show you what I did. So uh, Docker, I want to say Compose up, tag, tag, build. Uh, you want to do that. So that should start up the Redis server or on your computer if you have Docker installed. After that, what do you want to do? Uh, I have a very nice example, a very simple example to, you know, make things, uh, make uh, things uh, very uh, easy and, you know, make things very easy. So what I'm doing here is essentially, um, first of all, uh, you need to install like uh, Celery, uh, make sure to install Celery on your computer. Um, I already have done that. If you haven't done that, make sure to do that by using a pip to install Celery. Um, I'm creating an instance of a class salary. Uh, it takes three arguments. Um, essentially, the name of the queue, uh, I'm saying the name of the queue is task, backend, and the broker. Uh, in both of the case, I'm using a Redis, um, a Redis right now. So that's the URL for Redis. But you, if you are using RabbitMQ or some kind of other stuff, you can, of course, uh, do that as well. Uh, so what happens is, let's say this is a, this is a very simple code, uh, as I said. So all it does is basically, um, let me actually, so it, it basically this code uh, basically uh, has a delay for five seconds. So I'm simulating a background process here. It takes five seconds to make the call to the database, for example. And then what I do is basically, um, you know, I'm appending hello into it and I'm just returning that string, okay? So um, initially, uh, you know, what happens is, first of all, you need to run the celery. Um, so by, you can run that by using the command celery. So, so before even doing that, if you see, um, I have that, code in a file called as task.py, which is basically, if you see the folder structure, app, route, and task. So that's the file, right? If you run the uh, the, celery, uh, the celery command in the outer directory, it's not going to work. So that's the reason you want to make sure that you are in that particular directory that is a route. So now if you see, uh, let me, uh, so I have a task.py, that's where you want to run, okay? So the name of the file is task. My queue name is also task, okay? So I'm going to say salary A, task, worker, pool, solo, log level info. So if I run that, I just want to show you the overall process, how everything works together. So if you see the salary worker has started, so you can see app, that's the app name, um, all, of the, all of the details, solo eight, so all of that. So now what happens is basically, if you want to insert any task onto the queue, uh, you've got to be, right now, I'm, as I said, I'm explaining you, right? So. I'm in the same directory, which has a file called as task.py. I want to start my Python in, uh, in interpreter here, and I'm going to start writing some code here. So first of all, I'm going to import that, um, uh, this, uh, what do you call that, uh, function. So I can say from task, 
from task import uh, i want to say from task import background process so i'm importing that file i can actually run that uh, right here i can just show you for 2 seconds it's going to simulate that for 5 seconds i mean so it's going to like wait for some second and then it's going to print like hello to so now the way salary works if you want that to be a background process uh, all you got to do is decorate that uh, with the instance of a salary class that you created and then you would say dot task right that's the way you would uh, decorate that function and that would be a background process now once that is a background process what you want to do is basically let's say in your api code or whatever you want to run this as a background task right so all you have to do is basically you have to call that function and add the word delay into that so i have some snippets here for my examples so if you see data is equal to background that's the function i want to call dot delay is the keyword reserved i mean in salary basically that's how you um, simulate a background process so you say the word delay and then you give the arguments that the function takes so in this case i uh, gave that so if you see data it's an asynchronous it gives an id if you want to get an id i can say data dot id it gives an id uh, you can also say data dot status uh, so here you can say it says success so uh, let me show you something quickly again so i want to run the same command uh, background tree and i want to run the uh, quickly if i can run data dot status um, so it's again success actually i just wanted to show you uh, let me do it background so you can see pending right so if you keep uh, like uh, so unless and until the status is success um, uh, so basically status will give you like a status whether it's a pending or it's suck or the the worker has processed it so if in case you want to return the data if in case you want the data right so what you can do is you can say data dot get so when you say get it's going to return the data from a the whatever the worker was processing now one one thing you might ask because in the asynchronous architecture what you would do is basically let me again come to my pain so i said you know like the user will uh, basically post some data goes to the web proxy gateway goes to the queue um, in the background it's going to process but at the same time here you want to return the re result right so you gonna re return some kind of a task id now what the user can do is basically with that task id can check whether the task was complete or not so to uh, show you kind of uh, that uh, how it works so let me show you so i'm gonna i'm gonna say um, i'm gonna run that now remember it gives me an id right a task id that's my task id so if you want to get result based on the task id let's say you developed another api endpoint so i'm going to uh, import async result here and what i'll do is basically um, here in this one right here so i'm going to say data dot id id oops i guess i have an indentation error so uh, it gives an async again if you want to get the result you can say you can again run like status on it to make make sure that you have the data and then you can say data dot um, get to get the data from the queue so the architecture comes like this uh, so basically as soon as the user basically post some data you would post the data into the into into so basically he will hit hit a, the user would hit into a web proxy gateway which is running an nginx nginx will basically hit your uh, python api your python api would put the data into the queue and immediately you would re, uh, return a task id to the user and in the background that would be processing if the user wants to um, get the data with that particular task id you can develop one more api endpoint where it takes a task id and you basically when you pass a task id you basically uh, on the python code you would see hey if the status is pending um, say false return false if the status is success you want to return the data you want to get the data from the queue so that, that that's how everything works together um that's all the snippets um so again just uh, reviewing all the things we did so in order to in order to make any function as a background process uh, uh so so what you want to do is basically you want to decorate first of all you want to create an instance of a class salary you want to give the broker and the backend once you do that decorate that function with the task uh, as you can see here and uh, basically if you want to return any data simply do a return statement here now uh on the if you want to if you want to execute this function on the api side all you have to do uh, would be uh, call that function that is the background dot delay that means you want to run this as an async uh, then supply the arguments that you want to give uh, so as i just showed you in this example dot delay uh, dot id would give you the id 
uh, if you want to grab the ID, dot status would give you the status whether it's executed, or whether it's pending. And if you want to get data based on the async ID, what you can do, as I just showed you from salary result, import async result, uh, then you can, it takes an ID and based on the ID, uh, you can basically call the status. If the status is success, call the get method. If the status is pending, say it's in pending, right? So you can develop that entire infrastructure or basically entire API uh, that way with async. We would do a nice example uh, after this. Uh, we'll basically try to develop an API, uh, which which would be a completely an async using salary. Uh, basically, whenever a user uh, sends an image, we put that into the into the queue. The worker would process that, and later on, once the image is processed with that task ID, we can you know check whether the image is complete. So we will try something like that. So what I'll do is I'll try to list all the code uh, in the snippet section below. Uh, the initial code for this uh, would be there on the GitHub section. So kindly uh, make sure to check that out. Uh, uh, check that out. Uh, so the next part should be, uh, you know, bringing all of this together and creating a, a, a backend service with the Docker container and everything. So we want to make production ready like code, right? So we write, we'll write everything in a Docker container and make sure everything works. The salary, the Redis, um, all of that. So hopefully this video was useful. And if so, do give a like. If you have any more questions, list your questions in the comment section below. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, uh, so. Um, uh, so, the, so the basically the part two would be uh, creating a REST API uh, out of what whatever we just understood right now. So thank you for watching. See you guys in the next uh, video.